Hey there, I'm Tim Selby. You're on a beautiful morning at Fish Creek Falls. It's getting a little colder outside. I got a jacket on today. We got a little fog in the valley here. Thank you for joining me. I gotta tell you, I love the stories of Jesus. And when you read the stories of Jesus, there are so many stories of Jesus healing people, of him touching them, of him making them whole, of him bringing people to life. Such beautiful stories. And yet, as we talk about these miracles, we also have to ask the question, how do we understand them in the modern world? When we read these stories of Jesus healing and then we go through the day and we don't seem to see things happening like that. How do we understand them and what do we do? Well, people have done different things with the miracle stories through the years. Thomas Jefferson wrote a piece called the life and morals of Jesus of Nazareth, sometimes known as the Jefferson Bible. And you know what Thomas Jefferson did? He took a razor and glue, and he literally cut out the stories of the miracles of Jesus, Jesus doing miracles and supernatural things. He cut those out of the gospels and made a gospel without any of those stories in it. He just wanted what Jesus taught, how he told us to live, and he didn't want to deal with the miraculous or the supernatural, so he literally cut it out of there. Wow, that's one approach. <laughs> that's kind of extreme, right? On the other extreme might be a, a literalism that says you have to believe these miraculous stories happen just the way they're written, exactly that way, and no other way, or you're not some proper kind of Christian, right? Wow, that's pretty extreme too, right? And I think most of us, or maybe not most of us, but many of us live somewhere in the midst of that. We wonder how do we understand these stories? Perhaps we see them as a, as a mix of history and metaphor, as stories that, that come to bring us a spiritual lesson, but we're not sure about how they might have really happened. And intellectually, we're not sure how to, how to decide exactly what we believe. I would also say, I don't think it's that important what exactly we believe about miraculous stories in the scripture. I mean, at the end of the day, we're not going to be judged on our position regarding a miracle story. I think at the end of the day, we're defined by, by how we live, and who we are, and how we do it. And do, we, do we do our best to live in the path that Jesus puts before us? So if you wonder what to do with all these stories, that's okay. I would ask you this, as we hear these stories of Jesus healing people, I want you to ask this question, what does it speak to your heart and to your soul? Because what it speaks to our heart and soul is so important. And I think there's so much these stories have to teach us and that we can get out of them. So I want to walk you through this morning the, the Gospel of Mark a little bit. In the Gospel of Mark, you know where Jesus starts healing people? chapter one. Yep. Chapter one, Jesus heals many people. And then as we go through the course of that gospel, there's many healings, but some of them get detailed in particular. And I want to walk us through a few of those stories. The first one we come to is a, is a man who's a leper. And, and this leper, now when you were a leper in that day, you were not only ill in body, but you were outcast. You were shunned from society. You couldn't touch someone. You couldn't be near somebody. So, so you were banished. So it was a very difficult illness in body and in soul and spirit. And this leper finds Jesus. And he says to Jesus, Jesus, you can make me well if you choose to. Isn't that an interesting phrase, if you choose to. And you know what Jesus says to the leper? I choose to. I choose to make you whole and to make you well. And Jesus does that for this man. And one of the things I hear so deeply in this story that has a lot to do with our life today is this. Sometimes we feel untouchable. Sometimes we feel unloved. Sometimes we feel like nobody wants us or wants to draw near us. And you know what Jesus says to us in that place? Jesus says, I choose to draw near you. I choose to touch you. Whenever you might feel like you are untouchable, you are not. 
You are touchable. You are lovable. You are valuable. And Jesus speaks that right to us. There's another story about a paralyzed man. And people are wanting to come in front of Jesus because they feel that he has these healing powers. But Jesus goes into a home and there's a large crowd and people can't get in and it's packed and they can't get through. But this paralyzed man, you know what he has? He has some amazing friends. And you know what those friends do? Those friends take him up on the roof, they cut a hole in the roof, they use some ropes, and they plop him down into the middle of this house in front of Jesus. They'll do whatever it takes to try and help their friend find healing and wholeness. And you know what happens when this man gets right down there in front of Jesus? Jesus says to him, your sins are forgiven. Isn't that interesting? They want him to be healed, they plop him down, and Jesus says, your sins are forgiven. And then there's a little argument that ensues about can Jesus forgive sins? They're upset, you know, the religious folks are upset that Jesus thinks he can do these things. And so then he says, hey, 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 take up your mat and walk, go. But I think one of the things we hear in this story is that perhaps it's our spiritual healing that matters most. Perhaps it's our spiritual healing that is most important as we live with different maladies and illnesses and struggles and abilities and disabilities. Perhaps it's a sense of peace and healing and wholeness of soul that matters more than even our bodies. Do. There's a man who comes to Jesus in this gospel with a withered hand and Jesus heals the man, makes him whole, which you think would be a great thing, right? But the religious folks around him are upset. You know why? Because it's the Sabbath day and you're not supposed to work on the Sabbath. So you're not supposed to do this on the Sabbath. And I think Jesus in this, in this story teaches us a powerful lesson that people's health and wholeness, that people's well-being are more important than your re religious rules are. If we ever put our religious rules in front of the health and wholeness of people, I think we've got ourselves out of whack. And I think Jesus shows us that in this story. There's a beautiful story of a, of a hemorrhaging woman who has a bleeding illness. She's had for 12 years. And again, like the leper, when you have a bleeding illness in that day, you're also shunned, unclean. So for 12 years, this woman dealt with not only pain in her body, but the pain of being unclean and what that meant in that day. But she doesn't give up and Jesus is in a crowd of people and she pushes her way through that crowd and she, she reaches and touches the hem of his garment. And when she touches the hem of his garment, she is healed and made whole. And Jesus said, who touched me? And they look around and the disciples say, it's a crowd, Jesus, who can know? But the woman comes forward and says, it was me. And Jesus says, daughter, your faith has made you whole. He calls her daughter, a loving, beautiful term. And I think we learned from this story, keep reaching out. When you need help, keep reaching. And know that Jesus will call you a daughter, will, will, will touch you with love, and close connection. There's a man who's deaf in this gospel. He's deaf and he has a speech impediment, both. And you know what Jesus does with this man? Jesus takes him aside, takes him away from ready privately, and he touches him, he touches him with his hands and ears, and he says, be open, be open. And the man, and the man can hear, and the man can speak. But I love, I love so much in this story, this image of Jesus taking him aside. It's personal, right? He's not just somebody in the crowd. Jesus takes him aside because who this man is matters to Jesus. And he says to him, be opened. Oh, may all that is in us that is shut down, closed off, walled off, may it be opened up. What a beautiful story this is. There's a blind man that wants to be healed by Jesus. And Jesus spits and he, and he makes mud. And he puts it on the man's eyes and he rubs it on his eyes. And the, you know what the man says? The man says, I can see, 
but people looked like trees. <laughs> Isn't that great? I can see, but people looked like trees. Jesus maybe didn't get this one right on the first try. I can see, but people looked like trees. Not so great. And so Jesus touches him again, and then he clarifies it, and people looked like people. Now, I'm sure you can make a spiritual, um, you learn a spiritual and theological lesson out of this story, but I don't know, for me, I just, it just cracks me up. Uh, because for those of you who like me wear contacts or glasses, all I can, all I can hear when I hear this story is that, you know, when you're, you're the eye doctor and, and it says one better, two, right? One, two, trees, people, trees, people. <laughs> I guess there's a lesson, but I, I just love the humor that I find in that story. Um, it amuses me, maybe it amuses you too. But there's another story after that of another blind man. This guy gets a name, one of the few people, one of the few people that get named in the gospels, blind Bartimaeus. And Bartimaeus is this blind man who sits by the side of the road and cries out and calls out to Jesus. And he's yelling to Jesus because he wants to be, he wants to see, right? And the people around Jesus are like trying to, trying to shush him or trying to keep him quiet, right? And he, but he just, he won't stop. He just keeps yelling out. And Jesus says, bring him to me. Yeah, and Jesus, and Jesus heals him and makes him, makes him see. But one of the things I love in this story is just like, he won't stop, right? Just keep reaching out. When you need help, call out, reach out. Like don't suffer in silence. You know, if you need some help right now, talk to somebody, call somebody. Reach out to somebody um, and don't stop. Let people know that you need help. This guy by the side of the road, he's crying out. He, he wants to see and he's not gonna stop. He's not afraid to call out. I hope we're not afraid to call out for each other either. So many amazing stories of healing in the gospels and so much to draw from them. You know, I so wish that if you have an illness right now, a serious illness, or you have a loved one with a serious illness, I so wish that we could lay our hands on them or speak a word or lift up a prayer and they would be made whole. I so wish we could do that. And I, I know you do too, but we can't do the supernatural. I can't, we can't do supernatural things in that way. But what we can do, I think is the miraculous with a small M, maybe not a capital M miracle, but a small M miracle, the miraculous things, if we hear these stories, maybe like that leper, we can know that we are never untouchable, that we are that valuable to God, that God will always reach out and touch us. Maybe we can have and be friends like that paralyzed man had, that will do anything, that will do anything to support and love the friends that we have and know that our spiritual healing is perhaps the most important healing of all. Maybe we can, can always remind ourselves that our religious rules come second to the health and wholeness of people. Jesus showed us that. Let's remember that. Let's remember like that hemorrhaging woman that, you know, when we feel like maybe we're unclean and people don't wanna be near us or we feel like people turn away from us. Let's remember that all of us are sons and daughters of God. We're that valuable, we're that important. And maybe like that blind man, let's, let's call out for help. Maybe if we do all these things, we'll find little miracles, miracles with a small M, but miracles that bring us wholeness and life and help all of us along the way. You know, as we do that today, I wanna I highlight and thank people in our medical community doctors, nurses, therapists, EMTs, staff people, everybody that has to do with taking care of our needs and of our bodies and helping us to be whole. There's so many amazing things that happen with, with our healthcare in the, in the medical community. So many things that happen day in, day out, right here in Steamboat Springs or wherever you are, that would be no doubt called miracles 2000 years ago no doubt called miracles. And those of you who help do that and make that happen are no less than miracle workers yourself. So thank you on behalf of all of us. So may God bless you and touch you with a healing touch in body 
and soul. May these stories speak to you. May these stories bring you to life. And may you be blessed this day and every day with grace and peace.